Alrighty. Hey guys. We uh running a little bit low on energy. <laughs> We're almost almost through my stack of books. As you can see, we've been through a few today. Uh well, we got two more to go. Uh, we got the uh, the one we're going to talk about next. It's the uh, Pragmatic Programmer by uh, David Thomas and Andrew Hunt. Uh, this is the 20th anniversary edition. Uh, we uh, The next two books are... Well, this book and the next one are programming books. So um, that's the... Oops, sorry. Uh the too long didn't watch uh, is that uh, if you're not a programmer, you can skip this video. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, going to be gobbledygook for you, most likely. Um, if uh, if you are a programmer, a junior programmer, um, uh, it's it's a good book. However, I would say that it's it's a really old book by today's standard. I think I think like a, a better book would be like the Clean Code series, especially if you're a junior programmer and you haven't read a lot about code quality and stuff like that. I think it encapsulates a lot of those teachings uh, in into one book or one series a, a little. Bit better. I think the uh, uh, the reason why I say that is I think like over the years all of these code quality and, and programming and improvement or whatever architecture books over the years have been like regurgitating. So like when you work in the self help books or whatever, you start reading the same things over and over in the various books, just hearing the same things over again. Same thing happens here. This is one of the older books uh, in uh, in the sort of the field or whatever. Um, and so if, uh, especially if you read a lot in the field, you probably, if you haven't read this one, you probably already know everything in this book and we'll get into why, uh, a, a little bit more in detail later, but, um, but yeah, it probably wouldn't be my first recommendation, but it isn't, um, I wouldn't say it's a bad book. It's just, I probably would be the first book that I would recommend nowadays, even though it is, this one is one of the highest recommended ones. I think it's mostly because the people who have read this book they did so 20 years ago or something you know when it was still really new and fresh uh this book was when did it come out 1999 yeah 1999 20 years ago um over 20 years ago which is a long time in programming circles but this uh is the as the book talks about it's about sort of practical tips and hints uh to apply to software engineering basically uh let's 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 do the blurb so yeah Pragmatic Programmer is one of those rare tech books you'll read, reread, and read again over the years. Whether you're new to the field or an experienced practitioner, you'll come away with fresh insights each and every time. Dave Thomas and Andy wrote the first edition of this influential book in 1999 to help their clients create better software and really discover the joy of coding. These lessons have helped a generation of programmers examine the very essence of software development. Independent of any particular language, framework, or methodology, Pragmatic Philosophy has spawned hundreds of books, screencasts, and audiobooks, as well as thousands of careers and success stories. Um, now, 20 years later, this new edition examines what it means to be a modern programmer. Topics range from personal responsibility and career development to architectural techniques for keeping your code flexible and easy to adapt and reuse. Read this book and learn how to fight software, right? Learn continuously, avoid the trap of duplicating knowledge, write flexible, dynamic, adaptable code, harness the power of basic tools, avoid programming by coincidence, learn real requirements, guard against security vulnerabilities, solve the underlying problems of concurrent code, build teams of programmatic, pragmatic programmers, and take responsibility of for your work and career. Test ruthlessly and effectively, including property-based testing. Implement the pragmatic starter kit and like users. Uh, 
Written as, as a series of self-contained sections filled with classic and fresh anecdotes, thoughtful examples, interesting analogies, the programmer, pro programmer illustrates the best approaches and major pitfalls of many different aspects of software development. Whether you're a new coder and or an experienced programmer or a manager responsible for software products, projects, use these lessons daily and you'll see uh, quickly see improvements in personal productivity, accuracy, and soft uh, so job kind of satisfaction. You'll learn skills and develop habits and attitudes that form the foundation for long-term success in your career. You'll become a program pragmatic programmer. Jeez. <laughs> That's quite the blurb. Oi, oi, oi. There's a couple of quotes here. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody cares about those verbs. They aren't particularly useful. So yeah, as it kind of mentioned here, it's 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 these little sections uh, that you can kind of take uh, piecemeal. Of course, you'll just read through the whole thing, but there are these little sections, and they're kind of somewhat self-contained little episodes, I guess you would say, talking about different topics. And it's very much a collection of, sort of like a collection of essays um, on various topics. It's like a collection of blog posts, you know, if that was a thing um, back then. But it wasn't. Um, uh, well, sort of. Yeah, that was... That was it was WordPress back then, right? Uh, Lord have mercy. So yeah, there's all sorts of uh, little topics in here. Let's uh, let's let's talk about uh, a few of them. See if anything comes to mind. So the problem uh, problem with 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 a lot of these is the thing that I had the book that I had even when I was reading this, just a couple. Of maybe a year or two in my career i'd already internalized most of this stuff here and as much as i like to think i'm you know super intelligent and everything like that i felt like i don't feel like i was completely special i felt like <laughs> i felt like most of the things that i was reading was kind of obvious or i had heard it before so but everybody recommends this book so i'm like uh maybe they just read it 20 years ago and they're just really young and i don't i don't know i don't know i don't know i, I never i'm always careful to everybody's always in a different place right but uh for me it was uh this was rehashing a lot of stuff that I already knew, or that wasn't really all that insightful. Not, I don't want to hate on this, but not hating on this book, I want to be clear, but it's just, uh, topic number nine on our pragmatic approach is dry, the evils of duplication. That's the do not repeat yourself. And I don't know if that's where this come from, but it talks about it here. And it's probably early enough that not a lot of people were, were we're we're talking about it and that's one of the the things that uh it talks about is do not repeat your in case you don't know it's uh anytime you're writing code and you're writing the same code over and over again you probably need to encapsulate that bit of functionality uh, abstract it in some way so you can reuse it really really easily um uh, Uh, talks about estimating. Let's see. It talks about using version control. I know back in 1990, using version control was a, uh, a a huge deal. Nowadays, it's take kind of taken for 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 granted, but it's a huge deal. Uh, it was probably a bigger deal back then. Uh, talks about text manipulation. I remember. I think I remember this one. It was talking about you know thinking about programming in terms of just wherever you can, just manipulating text. You know processing text because it's easy to there's a bunch of tools for working with text and the more you're able to stay in the land of text uh uh the the easier it is to 
to reuse uh, your functionality or whatever. Mm -hmm. What else? Talks about decoupling. So, you know, making sure that, you know, you've got some segmentation between different components uh, of, of, of your system. Uh, talks about refactoring, uh, testing code, naming things. Um, uh, it, it talks about some some stuff. With, let's do the requirements. Uh, it talks about requirements here. It talks about the requirements pit. So, topic, what is that? 244. Let's see if I, I got a sense here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, many uh, books and tutorials refer to requirements gathering, gathering as an early phase of the project. The word gathering seems to apply of a tribe of happy analysts foraging for nuggets of wisdom. They're lying on the ground all around them, while the pastoral symphony plays gently in the background. Gathering implies the requirements are already there. You nearly, merely need to find them, place them in your basket, and be merrily on your way. It doesn't work quite work that way. Requirements rarely lie on the surface. Normally, they're buried deep beneath layers of assumptions and misconceptions and politics. Even worse, they don't really exist at all. The requirements myth. In the early days of software, uh, computers were more valuable in terms of amortized cost per hour than the people who worked on it. We saved money by trying to get things correct the first time. Part of that process was trying specifically to specify exactly what we were going to get the machine to do. We start by getting a specification of the requirements, parlay that into the design document, and then flowcharts and pseudocode and finally into code. Before feeding in a computer, though we'd spend time, spend desk time, uh, spend time uh, desk checking it. It cost a lot of money, and that cost meant people only tried to automate something when they knew exactly what they wanted. As early machines were fairly limited, the scope of the problems they solved was constrained. It was actually possible to understand the whole problem before you start. That's kind of what's going on with this this book, right? It's it's a bunch of, of topics and stuff uh, uh, in around, some of it technical, some of it sort of managerial, some of it kind of personal development or professional development and stuff it's a good book i want to be very clear so if i wouldn't totally skip this book but if you were only going to read a handful of books i would again probably start with the the, the clean code series but it is a it is a, a a good book and i would recommend it um uh, i would just say that it might just be serving as a reminder of things that you forgot you knew. Um, especially if you've been programming any any number of years. Or it may just be saying out loud things that you never really explicitly said to yourself or that you had explicitly heard before. Um, it might be just seeing it in print for the first time. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. That makes sense. Um, so anyway... Um, but it's a good book. It's one of the one of the pillars of uh, software, um, kind of quality type books or whatever. Uh, the pragmatic programmer. There's the uh, refactoring, and then I think there's design patterns, and then the structure interpretations of pro uh, programs. I think it was like the four really uh, foundational books or whatever in the kind of code quality kind of space early books that have now since been kind of synthesized and in, in more refined and in, in uh, more modern books or whatever but this is a good one and it's the uh, pragmatic programmer by david thomas and andrew hunt and uh just have one more book to go guys i will see you guys next week